Hello, welcome to GT Sport Bros. This is episode number two. Bo -bo -bo Bros. How you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. How are you, bro? I'm very good. I'm feeling very jubilant this after. No, it's not afternoon. It's pretty good into the night, and I'm feeling good because the World Finals are coming up, and we got some uh, assumptions to, you know, some alleged combos to share with people. Very alleged. Much presumption. But we have a really good idea, you know, of what's going to come at these guys in the World Finals. The FIA, Gran Turismo Sport, World Finals. Ah, uh, the World Finals. We know where it's at, right? Where's the location? It's going to be in a very James Bond, Shebang kind of spot. Mm. It's going to be in Monaco, Cote d'Azur, Monte Carlo, the French Riviera. Schnazzy. Yeah. You know what happens when Americans go to the France, go to France to battle it out with a bunch of countries, right? Oh boy. We yeah. usually do some things. I wonder if there's uh, suites only hotels in uh, in Monte Carlo like there are in Vegas because it's like one gambling location for another gambling location. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of gambling, a little tidbit factoid for everyone: if you're a resident. Or if you're a citizen, I guess, of Monaco, you're not allowed to gamble there, huh? How smart is that? Oh, damn. I didn't know that. Yeah. There's I, one cool thing I'd like to point people to, and let's face it, a lot of the fellow competitors, people that are going to World Finals are the only ones going to be listening to this. We're getting started slowly. We're, we're, we're a podcast that's kind of very insider-y and meta. But, uh, mm. yeah, so for those guys i recommend people that are going to monaco or just interested in, in monaco in general go to do the geography now youtube channel oh. it's a great youtube channel and he did one just recently on monaco he's going through every single country in the world starting with alpha, you know in alphabetical order and he's up to m's and he just did monaco and it's perfect timing and i learned mm. a lot and it's a really interesting spot it's a small place, isn't it? Is it is it smaller than like San Marino? Uh, it's got to be like bigger than the Vatican, but not by much, right? Right. It's about eleven miles long, by okay. maybe two or three miles wide. Quite tiny. Uh, doesn't have an airport. Guys are gonna have to fly into Nice. Nice is like just over the hill from it. Yeah. Or it's actually pretty much connected. Essentially, it's like. It's like Henderson in Las Vegas. It's like uh, Oakland in San Francisco. It's like... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite the comparison you've put there. <laughs> I don't know if either San Francisco or Oakland inhabitants would, would appreciate that comparison. But let's roll with it. It's like Syria and a nice Mediterranean beach. My goodness. And... Uh, Yes, so there's a lot of history there in racing, obviously. I would have been pumped to go. Unfortunately, we're going to have to watch, like, plebeians, like a couple plebs. Yep. And, but we're going to have fun, you know. We've been, we've been talking, and I think one fun thing that we could try to do is a companion kind of podcast where we both uh, watch together the live stream and try to live stream it ourselves, even though it may be delayed or whatever. Uh, we'll be in, in the chat. We'll be all over the place trying to, you know be representing our region and, and rooting our guys on and all that stuff. For sure. You know, it's like everybody likes uh, well, not everybody, but it seems a popular thing are reaction videos to new movie trailers, to sports events, to whatever. And if we set up I a good stream, exactly, and, uh, and we got like a chat going and we let the Gran Turismo family WhatsApp group know about this and everybody's in there uh, and all the plebeians uh, coagulate together then maybe we can form yeah. like some kind of super organism of, uh, Gee, of just uh, memorable entertainment speaking my lingo man I want to coalesce I want to become yeah I want us all to become one that's what this is all about <laughs> in the end but the uh, singularity of Gran Turismo it's, that's what's going to cause it yeah, we'll play Spice Girls. You know, uh, we'll uh, uh, we'll we'll watch the movie Osmosis Jones beforehand. Uh, we'll get in the right mood. <laughs> That's funny. I love that movie. But yes, so quickly to start off with some, you know, to give the people that 
tune into the podcast some early information get us going uh here are the breaks mm. so these are the breaks put on the binders race it up race let's, it up race let's hear it the up. breaks what do yeah, you got so, so there's one contentious issue is you know manufacturer series is only gonna have one day of racing and then it seems like nation's cup is gonna it's, it's like I don't even know what you could compare it to. It's like the Nations Cup is the Olympics, and or it's like Nations Cup is track and field, and um, manufacturer series is like rowing or so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the house of the mountain king. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's. Uh, it, it's weird that they they've only given one day to manufacturers, but um, you know uh, who who knows what's going on behind the scenes. If um, maybe they tried to get like, a, and, and by they I mean um, you know polyphony. Maybe they tried to get uh, manufacturers more interested in uh, throwing their weight behind, like uh, advertising, banners, sponsorship, corporate uh, input, uh, and uh, right. you know maybe maybe they they weighed how much input they received versus uh, how much input they received for uh, deciding the nations. Um, maybe. You know, we, we talked in the last podcast about uh, the importance of um, the emotive content, um, how much uh, the emotions matter, and and maybe maybe the, the organizers decided that they were going to get more out of nations than they were out of manufacturers. Um, you know, it's because we can't really go to these events and be wearing like a Porsche jacket or a Dodge jacket or or whatever. Um, we have to be we're going to be wearing like the Gran Turismo stuff. Um, so. Uh, you know, we'll see how it plays out. We'll see uh, if it was uh, the right decision or a mistake afterward. Um, you had said before that this is this is still experimental. It's like the first year of it, um, but uh, you know, just in in supposition, maybe that's what they're going to try. Maybe that's the reason behind it. Right, uh, and it's interesting because it seemed like manufacturer series was the flagship for whatever reason. Uh, that was definitely the most competitive, I would say, in the online portion. Mm-hmm. But now, going into this final, it's very much apparent to us that Nations Cup is the big one, and Manufacturer Series is also big. But you know, it could be this that they're treating Manufacturer Series in a way where, or they're, you know, it's more of like a Grand Prix one race situation, whereas Nations Cup is more of a they try to have it almost like as a micro series because mm-hmm. um, there's going to be. The two semifinals and then finals. Uh, Is it manufacturers like just an hour long race, like kind of an endurance? It, are they doing like a live driver change? I didn't look into that. Uh, no, they haven't really gone into that. Uh, so far, all we have is information on the Nations Cup with the manufacturer. I, don't, I did hear somewhere, I'm not exactly sure where, and I'm not trying to be, you know, like cryptic or whatever uh i wish i knew where i had read this i'm actively looking but somebody on like whatsapp or something mentioned that or maybe it was slack maybe it was one of the esports and cars guys uh they were mentioning that there's going to be an endurance race the manufacturer series and it's going to be i i actually am looking forward to that as a a competitor maybe it's not such a big like it's not so exciting but uh, I think it's going to be cool because it's a one. It's going to be one race. You know, the only real drawbacks are the fact that obviously one car is going to have, or just a few cars are going to have an advantage because of the BOP. Yeah. And and others may lose out. So if it's a car, if it's a track that's, you know, it has a lot of straight line speed. If it's a power track, then yeah. Uh, well, do you think that the BOP might be adjusted um, specifically for this event? As we've, as you uh, had mentioned before, that it seemed like grip levels were adjusted for the regional finals. Do you think they're going to do kind of a one-off, continual adjustment? They could. It would be smart. Uh, it would be very good of them to try to tweak things going in because you have like these guys that are just experts on, at the game. So why don't you use use them? You know, are you going to sit them on the sidelines where you try to? You know, while well, you and your and the staff try to make do when you have this insane resource, you know, like the coaches also trying to be the quarterback, right? So I would definitely advise them to to include the guys in, and no one's gonna feel like, oh, 
well, if he says something, he's going to get his way, blah, blah, blah. It's, where it's, it's an experiment like we already touched on, and I, there's, a, there's a real sense of that going into this. And, and you want to try to, if you can include in any way the other, the other competitors in so far as them contributing to it in a real way, that would be great. Mm-hmm. But uh, so the first day of, uh, I guess you could say, competition, it's going to be on the Thursday 15th of November. Um, that's going to be the Nations Cup practice and qualifying. Mm-hmm. So they're going to they're going to do the semifinal group division and the car selection, which they are going to choose the cars, kind of like how they did for the final races in the regional finals. So they being the competitors. No, I'm sorry. So to be more clear, yes, Polyphony Digital will be um, selecting the cars that are going to be used in the race, and then car selections will be made during the so in the, so what I'm trying to say there is they're going to s- they're the choosing the uh, al- the allotment of cars so after that then car selections are going to be made in the day zero driver briefing in the order of overall qualifier results hmm. so there's going to be a qualifier which I am I'm a big fan of and the qualifier is going to be the X 2014 standard at Cirque del Sarth, mm-hmm. Circuit del Sarth. Mm-hmm. and it's going to be really interesting because it's a really long track and, and you're going to be allowed to use racing hard, mediums, or softs and there's no tire usage requirement it's going to be a 20 minute qualifier so it's like obviously the best m- thing to do if you really have the track nailed is to go out, do a bunch of laps, maybe on mediums, get a banker lap in and then <laughs> do the slowest outlap on softs of all time <laughs> right and just you know you maybe, maybe like straight line the all the chicanes deliberately so you just accrue 20 seconds of penalty uh wean off the penalty through the porsche curves and then start your hot lap <laughs> right i think because of the, the the strange nature of the qualifier i think we're gonna have a lot of surprises I and mean, a lot of people are gonna be frustrated so it may be by design that it's like it's so weird Mm -hmm. and we may see some surprises yeah it'd be interesting and uh so we already have the groups and the groups are pretty interesting there's a lot of guys that are together that are super super fast um i like how high the level of competition is it's um like so many super fast guys i don't like to use the term aliens because uh I feel like we're all earthly and uh, alien is almost like it, it, it's reserved for, for uh, it's like a term that's used when you look at the speed of someone you can't comprehend it um, but if you if you observe them enough and you watch enough of their replays you can't comprehend it and suddenly they're not an alien anymore uh, alien is almost uh, uh, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for um You've given up trying to figure out how fast they are, and so you're you've resigned. That's the word I'm looking for. You've resigned to uh, to being convinced that they're of, not of this world, and uh, it, it's almost like uh, it's not calling them a cheater, but it's 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 like uh, oh I'm you know I'm never going to be as fast as the person that, that 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 guy is. They arrived on a spaceship. You know the the color yeah. of the sky on their planet is burgundy. I'm I'm never going to get that fast. Um, but uh, these guys, uh, I, I suppose, could all be considered aliens in that regard. Um, it, the level of competition is crazy high. Oh, it's super intense. And uh, it being the first year of the event, there's a lot of... It's set up to offer up a lot of surprises, I think. And it's going to be very fun to track these guys to see how they perform. Um, I think a lot of the aliens... Like we'll see the true aliens, you know. There, there are there are going to be some guys putting out their true alien selves at this event, and they'll it's going to show up in consistency. So the guys that are the most consistent to me are going to be I going to I'm going to be considering the the most impressive. Yeah. Because there's that's the other thing. It's like if there's a lot of racing that's going to be going on. It's a whole lot of racing going on, dude. It's mm-hmm. gonna in Nations Cup, and then. If, if you're a nations and manufacturers, it's even more. So it's just like part of it's an endurance, just, uh, yeah, like a marathon, right? 
Yeah, I like that there's four days total of, of racing. We're going to get, a, it's going to be a great litmus test of uh, determining, you know, where do they stack up? Who's going to be among the fastest? It's like, who can who can do 15 qualifying laps in a row without a mistake? Uh, ultimately, it's like, that's what you're always trying to do, right? Um, yeah. And uh, I, I just hope that as, I hope that like the maximum content available is going to be broadcasted. Um, you know, not just for the sake of entertainment, but for uh, uh, those many among us who are taking notes and and trying to figure out, you know, how did this guy, uh, Igor, for example, set like this crazy time at this track? Uh, oh, he did it this way. Let's see if I can replicate that. Like, I, I hope to get that kind of data from all of these guys. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, so... The second day is going to be Nations Cup qualifying races on Friday. And then on Saturday, the Manufacturer Series happens. Uh, And then it's on Sunday, it's it's Nations Cup final. So, yeah, there's going to be quite a jam-packed... They've got like some. Days. They've got some meet and greets with unknown celebrities. I think in the schedule, that uh, um, I wonder who that's going to be. Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> Probably Hamilton. Yeah, pretty, the guy who always jelly. he's always sporting the Gran Turismo hat. It'd be great. I mean, I don't. I don't want to get people's hopes up, but it seems like that would make sense, wouldn't it? It would they're make like, a lot of sense. Hey, Lewis, we're you know maybe they're talking to him last year. They were like. We got this thing that we're trying to plan out for November next year. It's after Brazil, what do you think? Can you be? In, could you hang out or around your house? Give us some time, and he'll probably be like, "Yeah, it sounds fun." Well, there's a couple of weeks between Brazil and Abu Dhabi, isn't there? So, like, he'd yeah. have time to return, and it's it's sort of like a midpoint between the two locales, anyway. Somewhat, yeah. May as well be the flying yeah. with the flying. Uh, so so, going into some of the, to report on people's takes on these world finals, um, not everyone shares the same enthusiasm for uh, getting to this level, because they, a lot of people have ideas of how racing should be, and everyone agrees that BLP in racing, and uh, when you're having when you have a lot of different makes and models, is very difficult to achieve, especially when uh, yeah it comes to trying to make it when you're when you have one blanket BLP that you're trying to make work at a lot of different uh, tracks is really difficult. Yeah. And so um, the team for Viper has decided not to show up. Um, they're kind of blo- they're kind of boycotting the event because they got a pretty significant uh, BOP uh, bump down or what would you call that like a nerf they were docked a nerf yes yes that's the word I'm looking for and so th- that along with other personal reasons the the th- two or maybe three of the Viper um, teammates got together and said we're not going to go and so of course that doesn't mean that viper isn't going to be represented at the finals it just means that uh the second place guys are going to go yeah instead so viper essentially or dodge loses out on some good soldiers yeah yeah it's that man what a a tough situation to consider and the hard decision to make this this is like a world stage and you want to represent yourself well you uh you feel like you might have a competitive disadvantage compared to everyone else uh i get it that's that's got to be like kind of a downer um and although on the one hand you can look at it like well i'm gonna be underdog now and what if i go in and uh win it all with dodge and like what a story that would make that's you know one way to look at it uh on the other hand it's like well what if i put in perfect qualifying laps make no mistakes and i finish eighth or 15th or something like that it's i I totally get it um but it's uh, how can i be even-handed it's kind of the nature of choosing a manufacturer um 
and the developers are always trying to keep it equal, um, but it's impossible. You know, uh, the Dodge has a lot of low end grunts, and it's got a wide track, and it's got big fatty tires, and it can do some things better than other cars can do, and vice versa. Um, Peugeot VGT is going to have crazy straight line speed, and Porsche is going to have like great braking and handling, but no straight line speed. It, they're all going to have drawbacks, uh, pros and cons. Uh, whether or not that ultimately can be leveled in the playing field, yeah, um, I you know it, I would hesitate to make that conclusion before even showing up to the event, because uh, we've seen how uh, event by event for the World Tour and the regional finals, the developers are willing to. Um, they're always working to try and like level the playing field. So to to decide that that leveling of playing field is not going to be attempted again is is a tough decision. But uh, man, it's it's I'm not in their shoes. It's it's hard to say. It's uh, I I kind of wish it was going to turn out a different way. But um, because we want the most talented people there, obviously. Uh, but on the other hand, the people who are you know, next in line are, are probably over the moon about being able to go now. So, um, what can we hope for? But just a good show, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with all that. And it, it is, um, it is disappointing, I guess, for some people, but it, others also see the realistic side of things, which is you do have to set aside a lot of time. And if you had, uh, you don't want to just go and uh, feel like you don't have a fair shake. You, you do have to put aside a lot of time out of your personal life in order to make it to this thing. And and that that also shows some real passion in the sense of they're only thinking about the competition. And all the stuff that goes along with it is awesome, amazing, incredible, once in a lifetime. But at the end of the day, a lot of people just want to be able to race to the to their you know to their potential yeah so and the race is going to be group three at the Nürburgring 24 hour layout mm. the interesting thing though is they're doing a uh, they're they're doing qualifiers um, where so the team of three is going to select one uh, one driver to be the qualifying attack driver and i think for nissan it's going to be really interesting because it's like i guess lightning you want lightning is lightning you know lightning is from germany maybe mm -hmm. he's a nurburgring specialist you know that's an insane discussion because you have the best the you have the regional f winners from each region on one team <laughs> so it's like does igor drive do does lightning drive mm -hmm. uh rochambeau it's got to be rochambeau right? <laughs> and then, uh, and they are going to do uh, live car swaps like we saw in World Tour. So three car three drivers are going to share one car. And then uh, the final race is going to be seven laps at the NURB. The Nordschleife, the Green Hell. The 24-hour layout. So a good lap around the 24-hour layout is about 10 minutes. So it's going to be about 70 minutes. It's going to be a pretty... It's like 60, yeah. I mean, if it's like a 24-hour layout, that's going to be about 7 minutes a lap or, or so. Oh, wait, yeah, you're right. I'm thinking of a different um, category. In Group 3, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they'll, they'll be like approaching an hour for the race. Yeah, so which is good. I love a good endurance distance like that. Yeah, me too. And... Yeah, the qualifier is going to be interesting though, because I've man, qualifying around Nurburgring is tough. Mm -hmm. That's never been an easy a task, and you mess up once, and it's, it really just kind of keeps rippling on down the entire lap, and it feels like eternity. It totally does, it. and it's not an easy track to pass on, even despite its you know twelve and a half mile length or fourteen mile length if it's a twenty four hour virgin um you know you, your your best opportunities are passed to pass are on the the gp portion of the circuit where it's like uh you know traditional width you get onto the the uh, northern loop and now it's just like kind of two car widths wide the whole way around and you're going to incur a penalty as soon as you tap someone on the side trying to get past them like anywhere 
So, uh, you know, you could have, you could be stuck behind someone for a third of the lap, half the lap um, during qualifying. It's interesting to think of. Yeah. And they're going to have the racing hards, mediums, and softs available to them. Um, I think hards are probably going to be the prime tire choice. Probably. I mean, like, they're they're not going to be able to do, like, what they do in real life where they complete just a lap of the GP circuit and they come into the pits or, like, start a hot lap. Um, you know, uh, uh, what would be traditionally the last turn of the GP circuit. They have to complete an entire lap before starting their hot lap. Right. So their tire wear is going to be uh, very important to consider. Definitely. And let's touch on what you think the strongest... In the current POP, what do you think the strongest? Because Porsche obviously is killing it right now. Yeah, Porsche Porsche has an advantage. A, a lot of people have pointed out, well, it's like, duh, the car is a GTE car, not a Group 3 car. If they brought in a 911R with the engine in the back, then maybe that might be more representative of uh, uh, where the car should be for BOP. So... Um, it's a really tough card to BLP because you bring it one click down. I almost wish they could do, um, instead of just stepping it up one full percent point, like if you could do half, like 0.5, you know? Something like that. I mean, they, they've tried to nerf it a whole lot. Like, before they even had BOP, everyone was asking, well, why are the gear ratios so long? Um, they are yeah. they are abnormally long and definitely not accurate. I think that, that right from the get-go, they understood, well, this car is going to be a little too fast uh, compared to everything else. So let's let's do something kind of uh, you know right off the bat to equal the playing field, and then we'll work on the BOP later. Um, so Porsche's Porsche's going to be a favorite. Um, it does wear out its tires faster because it's mid-engine. It's going to you know smoke its rear tires if you're pushing pretty hard all the time. Uh, I think the SLS, the Mercedes, uh, is a great all-around car. The the Aston Martin surprisingly good at the Nurburgring. Um, you know there could be there could be some surprises. The wider cars like the Viper qu- aren't quite as good because they're going to be more prone to hitting the curbs, and the curbs at the Nurburgring are gigantic and are going to upset the car, and you're going to lose exit speed and all sorts of stuff. So, um, but man, you know it's there's there's a ton of variables. If you're if you're just hitting your marks and you're smooth and you're carrying a lot of high average speed, uh, no matter what car you're driving, um, you could pull a big upset. Uh, the Nurburgring is a great equalizer in that way. Yeah, it's a great equalizer and trying to kill kill you, <laughs> trying to ruin your race. Yes, there's no mercy at all. It's called the Green Hell for a reason, and a lot of people yeah, are gonna be it's something else <laughs> thrown into the gates of of hell. Yeah, it's gonna be ooh, that's gonna be an exciting race. Uh, that'll be a fun Saturday evening to watch. Yeah, I hope they have uh, color commentators. I mean, like, uh, you know, everyone who's been commentating so far has been great. Uh, the you know Jimmy, um, I forget the name of the other English commentator, but you know, both top guys. They they sound like they are professionals. Um, the Spanish guys. I wish I could roll my R's like they do. I would. I would sound much more exciting than I actually do. Yeah, like I was hoping they could do that while Road Beef takes the lead, but. Uh, uh, you know, maybe next year. Um, but uh, they had, uh, you know, the Drift King at the the Asian final, Keiichi Suchia. Yeah. Uh, that is awesome. That guy's like the tippy top of motorsport celebrity in Japan. Um, you know, I wonder if they're going to have, if they're going to sit someone like Lewis Hamilton down or Martin Brundle or, you know, who knows. To uh, They'll be like, you know, what is this? Oh, it's like, oh, it's actually exciting. Let's uh, Let's get into it. David Hasselhoff would be amazing. I'm sure... TRL Lightning would like that. I lived in Germany for a couple of years in the mid-2000s, and I was surprised that David Hasselhoff was still very popular and released, like, Christmas albums in Germany. Uh, And I may have bought that album. (laughs) So, uh, you know, whoever they have, I think, is going to be cool. I think if they have anyone, it's going to be... It'll just add to it. You know, they already have a great basis with the commentators they have. um, But it could be fun with anyone. Damn, Tristan, you've got like you're essentially an honorary you're an honorary German, really. <laughs> you've, you, you have like you've t- you've ticked off so many of the boxes necessary to become a German. Uh, you've uh, gone way too fast in an autobahn. You've uh, yeah, ludicrous speed. You buy uh, horrible Christmas albums. Terrible. You, I, it's he sounds all right, but it's an awful album. <laughs> 
<laughs> you uh, you work for Porsche in some way. I don't know how much of that you want to disclose. I just work at a dealership. I've been there for like five years. You know, I write service. I'm I'm the guy who gets to tell you how much it's going to cost to fix your car. You know, the the most fun job in the world. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's still a privilege to be there. Uh, I've gone to a lot of cool you know, training and. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, and on top of that, you have so much experience, seat time, and autocrossing uh, classic Porsches. And, um, and the one thing, I keep going back and forth on my pronunciation, but uh, from what I un- understand, it's the Germans don't like non Germans saying Porsche because there's like a different vowel enunciation that you need to use in order to pull that one off. So they kind of, I've heard that they prefer that most non-Germans or non-native Germans say Porsche. Interesting. You know, maybe that's yeah. true. Um, I can't uh, confirm nor deny. But what I can offer is, um, you know, it's kind of like an American hang-up. It, it is an American phenomenon that people will point out when you're not pronouncing Porsche with two syllables. Um, uh, when I lived in Germany, Germans really didn't care that much whether you pronounced it Porsche or Porsche or <laughs> Porsche. Uh, and in fact, in southern Germany, in Bavaria, uh, uh, which is the largest of German states, um, many people would pronounce it, like native Germans would pronounce it Porsche, you know, with an E on the ends. Uh, uh, there's, there's, I th- and that's probably not like the only additional way to pronounce it. Um, I think I think getting hung up on how many syllables you use is, is uh only an American phenomenon. Yeah, riveting discussion for <laughs> for the podcast. <laughs> but uh, thank you for yeah, just to get that squared away, sort of. Anyway, um, yeah. So we were talking about the best BOP cars with manufacturer series. <laughs> I do want to move on to uh, nations in short order as well. But to go on down through the line and from our memories, um, what I know to be really fast freaking car for the Nürburgring, at least in my hands, has always been the Corvette. Yeah. I love the car around Nürburgring. It feels like it's at, like at home there. Just so nice. Yep. Yeah, All dude. of those super tight turning radius corners like uh, the Schreckenbach or the Schleddelmiel or the Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> you know, Close enough. Over by <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can't forget about the Schmack, Fuck, My Cock. Over by where there's a little... You must yeah. go deep into the Schlegel milk. <laughs> yes. Break far into the Wiener Schnitzel. Whatever those. There's some people that know all of the corner names, and I, I really, I, I respect and aspire to that. I'm, I might be one of those like, people. Yeah, dude. But there's a, a guy. Honorable mention. My friend GTP Nail, dude. You and him. To, I need to get you guys together. He's so awesome, and you guys would. You guys would be like peas in a pod, and his his racing knowledge is deep. He's like the Marianas Trench of racing knowledge. <laughs> it's awesome. That's pretty and deep. He knows every single corner. So his you're saying his knowledge has been visited by James Cameron. <laughs> his knowledge has been like uh, inhabited by two hipster beer drinking Frenchmen in the seventies. Yes. Wow. Bioluminescence all over the place. Yeah, he's got a lot of undiscovered uh, bioorganisms uh, hiding around in there. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so he, yeah, he knows all the corner names. Anyway, Nurburgring. That's enough on Nurburgring. Moving on to, well, I said okay. I said Corvette. What, what's another car that you'd like to offer up as a really con- good contender? Oh man, Peugeot. You know that yeah. the, the RCZ I think is is going to be uh, possibly a, oh an underdog. That would have yeah. been so nice. What well, Peugeot's not going. That's what sucks. Oh man, that's too bad. He, um, you know, Martin or AKA Tijney just missed out. But you're right. I didn't even think about that. He must have been. He's already going to Nations Cup, right? Final almost. But it would have been so nice once he found out it was Nerb. He must have been like, ah, yeah, bugger. Yeah, you're right. Oh well. Anyway, yeah, that's the Nurburgring has gotten a lot of uh, a lot of attention in this podcast. And just to get a little Alex Jones. There are documents. Oh boy! There are documents. That documents say, that turn the frogs gay. I have the documents in Nissan GTR. It's a conspiracy. They're trying to make Nissan be the winner of the manufacturer series, ladies and gentlemen. 
it says it right there. The combos, the nerfs, the BOP updates. It's quite not possible. It can't be a coincidence. Maybe, maybe you know it's follow the money. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say now. <laughs> we'll see. That's a conspiracy that's been coming up around in certain spots, certain threads, certain back alleys. They're like, hmm. So Nissan put up a lot of money, huh? They had their own little competition, huh? They had a little BOP uh, help before the World Finals, huh? It's a little, hmm. We'll see how it goes. Hasn't every GT Academy been, like, sponsored by Nissan? Yes. Nissan and Gran Turismo go hand in hand. And I've always loved that. Nissan, awesome company. Don't take this the wrong way. I know you guys are still thinking about giving me a racing contract, so by all means, do that. I'm just, I'm just reporting. <laughs> I have my ear to the ground. <laughs> and, I can, uh, I can vouch for you. You know, Eddie thanks. is, yeah, Eddie see, is very. I'm not making this up. Thanks, Tristan. Come on, you got to back me up. Eddie Gomez, he is up. very personable. He is very Thank you. handsome. He is uh, lucrative to myself. all sponsors. Uh, he looks I'm nice. Hoping. He smells nice. He talks nice. Sponsor me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Another car I'll throw in really quickly I think will do well at Nürburgring Ring is... Uh, damn, I had it in my head, but now I'm too... Jaguar? Um, full of conspiracies. Jaguar. Yeah. It's not going to be there either. Uh, oh, Ferrari man. should do, be a handful. That's going to be really bad. What's Ferrari, the car? Ferrari's like always fast for the first half a lap, uh, and then it's uncontrollable. Right. Um, uh, Volkswagen's probably going to have a tough time. Um, Volkswagen will be okay. Volkswagen, the, the, the Beetle especially, it, like, it handles the curbs really well. So, right. you know, you can you can put half the car up on the curbs like at Adenau Forest and uh, probably take a lot of time off of everyone. Ooh, let's uh, do predictions. So, let's just throw, you know, we don't have to think about it too much. Just, uh, you go with one prediction, I'll go with another one. Which manufacturer do you think is going to take it? Hmm. <sighs> Yep, yep. Uh, I mean, if Kid Rock were a manufacturer, maybe I'd pick him. Um, oh, that's my Jeopardy music. I don't like Jeopardy, so I go with Ball with the Ball. Gotcha. You know, it. My, I'm just going towards Porsche. What can I say? It's, it's yeah. like the the Porsche is just. Dude, it's so you're good. German enough. You don't have to keep. I don't know what like German consulate has you on the tapped. You keep trying to appease the German people. I love it, but sometimes it comes off a little too strong. Well, you know, when they ship me a case of beer every week, I just got to throw down. Damn. Okay, I got to get more information on this setup that you have going. But anyway, uh, I am going to say Mercedes. Not a bad Nick second McMillan. guess. I think that's I also really very likely. I'm pulling for Nick. All right. Wait, where is, what team was Doodle going with? Oh, uh, Andrew McCabe. Uh, I forget what man. Toyota? He was he Toyota was or Lexus? Toyota? I think Toyota, yeah. Toyota could be okay. Anyway, moving on from the Manufacturer Series to the Nations Cup again. Some predictions there. Uh, I will go through and say that the top 16... Oh, here's one thing about the year. Okay, one interesting insight, right? Mm -hmm. So the combos at Group 3... that well, The, the semi-race combos that they're doing are re repeats of the ones that the Germans, or the Europeans did at their regional finals. So they have somewhat of a familiar advantage going, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the semi-final A is going to be auto is Maggiore, Group 3, mm -hmm. uh, 10 laps. And then the other one is Dragon Trail Seaside 2, which I think is a really good choice, because a lot of people <laughs> avoid that track, including myself. Yeah. I kind of wish that was what our track was for the block race. Yeah, it would have been interesting, right? Be right. Because the chicane is kind of a straight line in that version. The, yeah. Like the, you look at the track map and like the track kind of curves uh, to the left on the, the normal clockwise version, but on counterclockwise, uh, you don't have to be like steering and a lot of the throttle. You just uh, blast through the chicane with with uh, throwing caution to the wind, uh, and the rest of the course is a fun challenge. Um, yeah, I'm happy that they chose the reverse layout. I think that's going to offer pretty good racing. Yeah. 
And then there is a race one that's supposed to be N500, but I don't know. I don't have full inf complete information on that. But moving on to the repishage. It's actually going to be group four at the Red group Bull. Group four. That's going to be a race. Uh, is it Red Bull Ring full or Red Bull Ring short? It's going to be Red Bull Ring full. And the cars are going to be chosen, I think, by the... They're going to be assigned a car. Yeah. Hmm. I see. Man, I don't envy the person who gets the Veyron or the NSX or the McLaren. Uh, yeah, the, the, the BLP for Group 4 is even worse and, uh, and it needs a lot of work. Well, let's be, let's be a little more constructive with our terminology here. It's not <laughs> necessarily worse, it's just it has more room for improvement, let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, it's that, you know, that's a, that's a track that'll have a lot of drafting and uh, uh, a lot of... Uh, it'll be a good differentiator for who can break the latest. Uh, I think it'll, it'll be competitive no matter what car you have. So, uh, you know, I've actually not driven Group 4 on Rebel Ring, so I have no idea what to expect. Um, you know, the, like, like the Porsche Cayman is great everywhere, except on the fast tracks. Um, and this yeah, is this is a track where, you know, you're going to have to be... Oh, and also track limits on that track. Uh, turn 1, uh, if they have strict yeah, track limits... That, right, it's going to be different. For, they're going to be more strict with penalties and more strict with track limits. That, that could be a very penalty-heavy race. Very true. Because people are going to obviously be getting pushed wide and such. Ooh. Yep, they're going to be pushing hard. Well, I think we're in for a lot of very interesting and entertaining and uh, edgier seat races. Um, it, it's cool to, to think about it that way. It's almost like we're guaranteed that for every race. Um, it's, it's cool that we're uh, invested into uh, all the characters, all the, the people who are going uh, everyone has a chance, you know. I don't think there there are some people who you might think are a little stronger than others, but not really. You know, not really, man. It's 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 uh, uh, when they're all on a stage and they've got a camera pointed in front of them. Who knows what's going to happen? So uh, I really look forward to seeing this stuff. Yeah, not only the media aspect or the the overview broadcast aspect, but also the fact that it is the world final. The, all eyes are on them. Uh, the, they're going to feel. It's just going to be like they're going to be flying really close to the sun, so to speak. Mm. And some some of those guys' wings are going to melt, brother. Yeah. And we're going to be there to taste them. Yep. It's funny that you use that metaphor because we, we need to have like a space podcast. I don't want to diverge, but like the Parker Solar Pro just passed within 15 million miles of the sun and gathered its first samples of the chromosphere. And uh, we're talking about these guys and how close they're going to be passing to the sun. You know, I'd, I'm just drawing parallels uh, from out of nowhere. I pull a lot of things out of, uh, you know, the the, the that nether a, regions. Isn't that an Indian satellite? No, it's, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's collaborative between several countries, but I think it's a U.S. effort. Oh, yeah. America. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite <laughs> cool satellite, just a, as a tangent, there's a, well, Lisa is a... Three prong, it was like three satellites that shoot lasers at each other that are super far away from each other near the sun that are going to measure the gravitational waves. And that is badass. Yeah. Look into it. There's a lot of cool satellites out there. I feel like we need more of them. We need to, you know, get out to the moons of Jupiter and Saturn and find out if there's life in those um, frozen oceans. Uh, we need to get your ass to Mars, um, <laughs> you know, as soon as possible. Uh, we need we need some space stations at Lagrange points between the Earth and the Moon. We need space elevators. Space uh, racing. Yeah, space racing, dude. How awesome would that be? It's like if <laughs> if we're not gonna have like a, a Cold War space race, then why not have right. uh, uh, like actual space races? That'd we need awesome. F zero. You know who's gonna be Captain Falcon? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out there and and make some TV. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna have to work out and you know build my muscular tude before I can be Captain Falcon. But it just so happens that Captain Falcon is my favorite Smash Brothers character, so uh, I might be I might be destined to be Captain Falcon. <laughs> you are. I believe it all the way. That would be great to do a side podcast there every once in a while where we just kind of talk about whatever we want besides Gran Turismo. Because um, I, I know a lot of people listening have similar sort of nerdy, you know, 
interest. And so why not? It'll be fun. I'm just going to play it by ear. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I think we've covered a lot of the FIA World Finals. Yeah, um, we have. Stuff. We've got like a, a bright future to look forward to with this game. Um, you know, and like they're delivering updates every month. Um, yeah, we can talk about the updates and then go into wish lists. You've uh, you've been hoping for Laguna Seca for a while, and oh, I think yeah. Lu I think Laguna Seca has got to be one of the next tracks they're going to bring us because it's always been like a Gran Turismo hallmark track since uh, yes. Gran Turismo. It was in Gran Turismo one or was it Gran Turismo two? I think uh, I want to say two. But okay, you know, but Google is my trivia brain. That's your favorite track, isn't it? <laughs> my favorite what? Track? Yeah, yeah, Laguna for sure. It is my best track. Uh, my favorite track is Suzuka. Not always the best there. But um, Laguna is, for whatever reason, track that I'm always really fast at. And yeah, that's all. So I, I look forward to racing there. That's all. <laughs> it's a good track. It's, it's maybe like a, it's a bit of a short track. But uh, yeah. each turn is unique. Um, each turn has, a, with the exception of like turns three and four, has its own specific camber value. Um, it's tough, man. It, and it's it's like Sears Point in that you really don't have any time to rest. Uh, yeah. You exit one corner, you immediately have to prepare for the next corner. You get you get maybe one or two breaths between turn six and the corkscrew, but even then you still have to be thinking about like lining up for the corkscrew so that you. Are breaking as straight as you can and not locking up and not kicking it sideways. Um, that man, that's a tough track. Yeah, and it is such a long run, um, considering the slow speed that you need to get to uh, for the last corner. Go onto yeah. the straight, and then you have to, you know, try to put the power down gently and efficiently. And then there's always I've had so many like drag races to the finish there. It's awesome. Yeah. So. But we hope, yeah, we can only hope something cool. But who knows? It might even be debuting at World Finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, or like, I don't know. I don't know if there's actually to be announced tracks. The only one that hasn't been fully decided, I think, is the race one, mm -hmm. the M500 race. Yeah, still no details on that. So it's M500s at Laguna Seca. You never know. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so the recent update that came out, which I think is, what, 1.29? Mm-hmm. Uh, it added some things. It broke some things. It had, uh, Catalonia, Catalonia, Catalonia. I like that track. Which is a great track. Very fun. Great drifting track, as you showed. Uh, <laughs> and they also added old school 2008 GT500 cars. So... Yes, the, which are amazing. Those cars yeah. are so cool, especially the NSX, the way it sounds like the intake warble. Um, mm -hmm. Man, and a lovely car to drive. Very difficult, very capable, um, super rewarding. And it looks great in a dark purple, if I say so myself. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Take your word for it. Plum crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they also added the 22B and a few other road cars. Uh, the Pagani Zonda, yep. was it? Yep, the Zonda R. Uh, the Ferrari 288 GTO, which was the uh, kind of the test bed for the F40s uh, power plant. The, uh, what was it, 2.85 liter twin turbo V8. Uh, that's a special car. That's basically like a 328 with a supercar engine in it. Um, Amazing. Oh, and don't forget... The Mini Cooper S. Ah, yes. You know, the most Mini. exciting edition of all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, a good car. Uh, that, was, that was like the first car built in collaboration between uh, those who own Mini in England and BMW. That's It's essentially a BMW. It uses all these BMW parts. Um, and I think the first Cooper S was supercharged, and a couple years later it was then turbocharged. So interesting right. development on those things. Fun cars yeah. to drive, for sure. Yeah, the development on DLC is rolling along really well. That's one thing no one can complain about for sure. Uh, but going into the future, um, there's a severe thirst that the community has for tracks, uh, and more specifically, real tracks. So 
any anything that they can throw our way in the form of real tracks would be great. Uh, Do you have a short list of maybe like top three real tracks you'd like to see next? Uh, yeah, definitely Spa, Laguna Seca, and then uh, I would also I've been thinking more and more recently about Motegi and how I feel like it's very lacking mm-hmm. um, in the in Gran Turismo. It's an awesome track. I think it would be really fun. What about you? Motegi's a good circuit. Motegi, Motegi seems always quite good for like shuffle racing in GT5. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, it's uh, prettiness is debatable, but uh, it can't be argued that it offered a great variety of corners and uh, a number of straightaways. And I think that was what lent it to being uh, very good for those kind of races, exciting races that it would lend itself towards. Uh, yeah. Spa, you know, Spa, Spa is a great, amazing, unbelievable track. I've driven Spa in real life, and oh, uh, really, I didn't know that. Awesome. Yeah, the the hype is real. Like that that track is uh, right up there with the Nurburgring for just just unbelievable tude, <laughs> for <laughs> lack of a better word. Um, but, uh, you know, if I were hoping for anything else, um, even though Sears Point is a home track, I don't think I would put it on there because, uh, although it's very technical, it, it's, uh, it's very draining. Like Laguna Seca, there's no place to rest. And, and we've yeah. seen it before. Um, I would hope for, uh, almost like a, uh, a recreation of a real track that doesn't exist anymore. Like uh, solitude, or oh, that's an interesting uh, idea. ruin, or uh, a Poe, or um, Bremgarten, or uh, <laughs> this sounds like gosh. Lord of the Rings characters, right? Yeah, I mean these are these are tracks that like were uh, that like Fangio and Ascari were racing on, uh, you know, like eight miles long that had crazy elevation changes and huge straightaways and long twisty sections that were like Spa and Monza and Coda combined all together. Um, you know, in the same breath, I think Coda would be like an excellent addition. Um, yeah, it could be cool. Coda's got like a, a bit of everything too. But yeah, I love I love Road Atlanta. I would love to for that or Virgin, or Virginia International Raceway. Um, there's a lot of American tracks like Ro- uh, Road America is killer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, ton of cool tracks. Not Daytona. I know, I think you don't. You're not a fan of Daytona, right? Daytona's got a lot of history. I have a lot of respect for Daytona, but I don't like driving Daytona. I think yeah, I think I like it's it. yeah, you know, coming off the it, it it offers a unique challenge, you know, and I I can't deny that, but uh I think I think the infield is just half baked, man. You know, and and like the chicane on the back straight, it, of course it is. Uh, it's it's fast. I think I think if I were if I were forced to race D- Daytona, I would have a fine time with it because it because of the challenge that it offers. But if I'm uh, you know booting up Gran Turismo and I'm pulling up just like a free trial run, a, a time trial, or I just want to test a new car out, I'm never gonna pick Daytona. Uh, I'm gonna pick something else. <laughs> you know, there's nightmares about racing that track because we would have to tell people when we when we would do like club racing, we'd have to instruct people to not take the shortcut pit exit because you it would take it would spit you out and you wouldn't necessarily you could just join right back into the track not yeah yeah take that really long windy pit exit that's to the left uh so that was interesting um it wasn't always the, the most uh <laughs> there was always chaos when we raced that one it seemed like turn one was was always a mess but for some reason i always look forward to it regardless of the history and all that yeah, There's just something about it that was uh, that I found to be pretty interesting and fun. Yeah, you know, um, Gran Turismo. I think having the works, the developers that they're going to have like the day night cycle, and uh, and once they get that going, and you've got like uh, the day to night with uh, Daytona and like accumulation of uh, you know tire debris outside the line. Um, similar to like what iRacing is able to do I think Gran Turismo are trying to do too um, that will add like a, a layer of mystique that will uh, probably attract me more back to Daytona um, yeah. it'll be it'll be like Sebring but in, in a banked oval 
and and that'll be nice. Yeah, and we, who knows what the future is going to be hold? Or let me put it this way: uh, we don't know exactly how the next generation of consoles are going to go. But if there is a PlayStation Five and Gran Turismo Sport continues to be a PS4 thing, uh, and we could be uh, facing the fact that. Uh, the only Gran Turismo game on PS4 may be GT Sport and GT7 may be a PS5 title. Who knows, yeah. right? I yeah. would prefer that, to be honest. I don't want another Gran Turismo 6 situation. Yeah, Gran um, Turismo 6, that was like they... It almost felt rushed. You know, they wanted to get it out to make sure they got enough sales before the PS3 died. Yeah, and we were racing on PS3 in, in its old age and... The, the PS4, there were PS4 racing title. Oh, there was P4, PS4 had released. It's been, it had been out for a while, so that was also strange. But um, that being considered, I think that would give them kind of a pass on trying to get too crazy with adding stuff like Day to Night and Rain, etc. I feel like they could, if they were to focus on GT7 on the PS5, that's where you start adding the Rain effects, and I, I don't think it would stop there. Because mm-hmm. when, when Gran Turismo updates, or it, they shoot for the moon, you know, so I think we'll be seeing stuff coming to console for the first time, such as um, rubbering of the track, evolving track f- surface. Um, we may even see, like, seat swaps. Mm-hmm. They're, they're becoming more and more uh, f- feature. They're trying to add more racing Ooh. features. You know. I just thought of something that uh, I I'm I'm glad we're on this topic of uh, so dude I I love the photography mode I can't yeah. get enough of it I've taken like eight or nine hundred pictures that I've shared in Gran Turismo yeah, Sport you're great at it check out Road Beef and check his gallery out it's, uh, it's thank insane. you dude um, like I I love it since the days of, of racing uh, on PC simulators and R Factor and stuff like that uh, I would always yeah totally i would save the replay i would finish the race uh, i would spend hours uh watching the replay from like almost everyone's perspective and picking out photos of them like getting two wheels up on a curb or like executing an awesome pass or like rolling their car in a big accident um and i would i would uh, always think of like ansel adams like uh, a, a great picture depends on where you stand and try to move the camera to a position that's like trackside, like where someone would actually be standing. Try and add that to, to emphasize the realism. Um, and Gran Turismo is almost there. Uh, and if if I had a number one wish list item, it's to uh, expand upon um, the photographic element. Uh, right now, we're restricted to when you move the when you go into a, a camera capture mode. And you pick like the the little like uh, oh walk around the track mode. You're restricted to being inside the visible track limits. Walls. Yeah, you can only be inside the visible walls. Why oh, can't or, why, yeah. why can't I go out to uh, the grandstands and take a picture from from over amazing. there? Why can't I be on the other side <laughs> of the wall where like the track workers, the animated yeah. track workers are? Then it's like we're in a realistic perspective. I can focus on the car going by with a low shutter speed and oh, like uh, you know, something's I, focused and it looks real. Uh, we're almost there, yeah. and like I, you know, there's a few points on some tracks where you can achieve that kind of realism, but it's still difficult. Like that suspension of disbelief is is a difficult thing to achieve uh, um, unless we're going to be given uh, more freedom of movement for that kind of thing. And I understand that it's going to be a difficult thing to achieve because um, there's textures. probably yeah textures are are going to be blank. You don't want to have like uh, texture clipping. Uh, some of these polygons are going to have to be made solid so that the camera actually still has limits when you go beyond the wall. There's going to be a lot of work involved, but I, I think it would be worth it. And if what if they did this and uh, allowed for uh, spectators to join uh, a race already in progress and uh, join as a photographer during the race in progress, take the pictures, and in post-race, those who just completed the race can change a tab and see the pictures, the best pictures that the photographers posted, and be like, "Yeah, I want to save that." And yeah, they can man. tag the person, and like, here's here's all the photos that has Wardez in it, or has Dodge Lamb in it, or has uh, uh, Andrew McCabe in it, or has Tierra Lightning in it. Um, you know, like there was there was a racing uh, club called uh, Race to Play that I I was a member in for like ten years before they shut down. And they had that. They had a, a tagging system just like Facebook where you would upload a screenshot and you could tag all the people that are in it. 
Um, and if, if Gran Turismo came up with a similar thing, then uh, the game could explode in a, yeah, a new community. I, I always underestimate the, the, the f- like f- photo side of of the of games of things uh, because i'm not a really i'm not really into photography i'm not a great photographer or whatever i don't have a knack for it or s- I, I love looking at the pictures but as far as taking them i'm not as interested but uh, i underestimate how much that can push a game and i think one game where we saw that is uh, like really become a breakthrough is uh, spider-man for the ps4 hmm. if you make the camera system more dynamic and you allow people to uh, be more unique in the way that they approach it that's just nothing but good and it's going to promote the hell out of the game and i feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of room to give uh other jobs so to speak besides driving and put focus on like they've done a great job with that in this game with adding like livery uh pro you know galleries where people are all about liveries and sharing them and a lot of photographers get a lot of clout and great have a lot of followers and that's awesome the creative side of it is is starting to really become a thing and i think that if you were to introduce some sort of system where you treated the track like a huge environment that uh you can see from all angles kind mm-hmm. of like if you think of the um forza's like what what do they call it the forza mode where you can see the entire car open up the engine cover and all that mm-hmm. forza vision or whatever it is um, if you think of so Forza already has that, so why does, why not Gran Turismo uh, focus on the tracks and um, rendering every single angle of the track, so you can have uh, cameras free roaming in the trees. Like imagine taking a shot. Uh, this is getting me hyped, and not I'm not even that, <laughs> that into photography, but imagine being able to take a shot from the Nurburgring in like where you have trees in front of your camera lens. Yep, and at night or something or, or what, whenever there's just like stuff like that even just adding little trees or, or being able to take a picture from like those um those cottages that are right next to the track for sure dude on the 24-hour version of the nurburgring they went through the trouble of rendering uh bonfires and yeah. uh, and like the parties that that do happen at that uh, at that party just all throughout the whole racetrack um they've they've got the npcs uh rendered they've got like their vehicles their campers the the big structures they make the tents the bonfires the barbecues um all it takes is just a little bit of extra rendering to put in like sparks from the bonfire and you can make like a film noir of uh you know a 24-hour sim race um the the creative possibilities are almost endless if they added just a few things so uh you know, more tracks would be great. More cars would be great. Uh, I think that more creative fo- photographic elements would be even better. That's awesome. And that's a great way to end it. Uh, I just wanted to add that I, I just want more realistic racing features, um, more, like, more real-life uh, aspects of racing that you can inject into the game, the better. And um, playing around in the exhibition off-seasons, I hope that they do continue to experiment and um, and try different weird like, formats of racing and add more days or less different time slots. Just go crazy, you know, really try to figure out what the best for the future is. And I think, like we've emphasized before, GT Sport has a huge, bright, glorious, beautiful, amazing one in, in hand. It's just got to keep going and we can, uh, yeah, I have a lot of hope, so... I do too. Thanks again. Of course. Thanks again. This uh, uh, this this podcast would not be possible if it were not for the broadcasting services of WRDZ Eddie the Juarez Gomez. If he's not spinning, he's winning live from Las Vegas, winning the hearts and minds of millions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. That has. This has been Wardez and Road Beef over. Road Beef! Out.